Hi everybody, I finally got around to starting my video, um, and there's been a few changes. Um, I originally was going to do the video on um, the history of, of Vlad Tepish, also known as Vlad Dracul, but um, during my research I was reminded of someone and decided that uh, this person might um, well, to be honest, I felt like he deserved to, um, be featured in a video, and, um, since I have a slight personal connection, I thought I'd share this info with you instead. Um, um, to go back a little bit, uh, most of the people who know me, who are watching this video, know that I w didn't start college until I was in my later years. I was around 30. Um, by that, I wasn't able to go to college right out of high school. And by the time I did go, I was a single mother. And, you know, I was looking to try to um, improve my education and get a better job to be able to better provide for my children. You know, the, you know some of the common reasons why people start college and their later years. Well, I believe it was like 92, 93, somewhere around that time that um, some friends of, and I attended a lecture being given by a Dracula expert uh, during you know, the Halloween season. And because vampires and um, horror and things like that were among the common interest between me and my friends, you know, we decided to attend this lecture. I don't remember a lot of specifics about it, except it was an older gentleman with white hair, very distinguished looking, um, who wore a quote-unquote vampire cape and talked about his research and history in, um, in the book, a book he had written which I'd heard of but hadn't read called In Search of Dracula. And he also talked about um, a newer book he had come out with called um, The Ultra... I think, let me see, checking my notes here really quick. The Complete Dracula. Um, not to be confused with the book I had previously owned called The Ultimate Dracula. I just wanted to verify that 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 I said it correctly. Anyway, um, so we saw the lecture. It was interesting. We enjoyed it. Um, we later on went out to an area we used to call, our, you know, our patio, or the we call it, more often than not called it the round table. Um, it was an, an outside area in the student activity center. Long story, but anyway, so we were outside and. Mr. McNally, who was the speaker, Raymond McNally, uh, walked by, I think we spoke to him, or he spoke to us, I can't remember which, we started a conversation, he sat down with us for a little while, I believe he was waiting on a ride, um, he told us about some of the other books he had written, one that he was working on, um, how he got interested in, in the subject matter and things like that. And um, at the end of it, you know, I remember thinking, you know, this is a little bit kooky, slightly eccentric, older man who perhaps was like reliving his glory days of being a best-selling author, something along those lines. Because uh, I was going to a relatively small community college in a relatively small southern town. So I thought, you know, small potatoes, as some would say. But anyway, you know, we talked, I, I believe I got his autograph on a book um, that wasn't one of his, but that he said that he had enjoyed, and I later lost that book in a fire, you know, years later. And, um... Like I said, in doing the research and running across his name, I thought to myself, you know, well, I remembered he wrote several books, so I decided to look up 
and see. And I knew he had done research. Um, ex he had said he had done extensive research and had visited Transylvania and some other things. So I thought I'd, you know, find out a little bit more about that. I'm pretty, I'm going to be referring to my notes um, because it's easier that way for me. <laughs> being an older lady and everything but to tell you a little bit about him a lot of this I didn't know I knew a, lo a good bit about some of his research um, and that part of his life but a lot of other things I didn't know so um, as a child he was very he said he was a very imaginative kid and he was fascinated by Grimm's fairy tales and when he was in high school, he went to a uh, Jesuit high school called St. Ignatius where he excelled in music and scholastics. In fact, he got a scholarship to Fordham University. And he entered Fordham University as a French major. But um, I believe it was during his junior year that he went abroad and um, went to the University of Paris in France, of course, but he was hosted by a Russian family. And getting to know this family, um, that sparked an interest in, um, in Russia and Eastern Europe and, you know, the authors and other things about that time I mean about uh, that area well he came back to Fordham and graduated with high honors and he ended up eventually becoming a professor at Boston College but I believe it was before he started his professorship that he got a, uh, with the honors he had received from Fordham, he was awarded a Fulbright scholarship for research where he went to the Carpathian area, uh, Transylvania, Romania, uh, that area, and he, he spent, I think, a year, maybe two years doing research on the culture and on vampire folklore and the legend of Vlad Tepish, etc., etc. And that ultimately led to his first book, In Search of Dracula, that he wrote with Radu Florescu. And uh, Florescu ultimately, <clears throat> the both of them um, had professorships at Boston University. Um, at some point, like I said, he had written, well, before all of this, he had written a, fi uh, a, a sci-fi type fiction novel called Shadowless, but um, In Search of Dracula became a best-selling novel. It all eventually became the basis of multiple documentaries. Um, because of that book and some of the subsequent books that he wrote, and I'm again referring to my notes, which included uh, The Essential Dracula, A Clutch of Vampires, The Complete Dracula, Dracula Was a Woman, and a book about a Rus Russian philosopher that I cannot pronounce, but it's about, um, like, like I said, um, Russian and, and Eastern, uh, Eastern European culture. Well, um, Dracula Was a Woman was actually a book about Elizabeth Bathory, who was a countess and I think the 1400s, who short version was who ultimately murdered about 600 local villagers who were uh, female virgins 
in order to bathe in their blood because she believed that it kept her skin young and beautiful. Um, and while his primary focus was on um, Dracula, he also did research on, and during the, the process of, of doing the book, the Dracula-based books, he also did um, a research study on Bram Stoker and his inspirations for Dracula and the connections to the true folklore that in, had inspired him and the details in Stoker's book about Dracula. He also wrote a book called In Search of Jekyll and Hyde. And that's a whole nother realm, but uh, basically he said it's not about, um, I'll just tell you, in, in an interview he said it's not about what you think it might be about. It was, not it was more political than it is psychological. And there's a long story behind that. But um, I believe it was during the time of his professorship that he married and uh, ultimately had five children. Now, besides being a best selling author, a noted researcher, an expert on Russian intellectual studies and Eastern European studies, he was also a, uh, a civil rights activist, he was a political activist, and he contributed quite a bit to, um, to the community around him. Let me see. And I don't know if I, if I said that one of the things that inspired inspired him to do the research was that he was inspired by an old Dracula movie made in the 30s where he noted that they got a lot of the, the, the demographics and the geography right in the, in the story and that kind of inspired him to check out the folklore which led to the research of Stoker which led to further research which led to uh, this series of books and I'm not going to bore you with all the details and everything but like I said there have been multiple documentaries he has been honored by um, academia he's been honored by the movie industry the um, about he's been uh like i said touted for his research uh papers he is considered an expert and uh or he was he was um honored for his contributions towards eastern um intellectual study middle e uh not middle eastern eastern european intellectual studies and um uh, thought highly of and the academic arena he um, contributed a lot of information into I guess you'd say pop culture as I said that eventually became public knowledge which is why so many of us now know about Vlad Tepish and his history because these things he helped he wasn't a, by any means the only person to do research on this but he was a great contributor towards the knowledge that we have about Vlad Tepish um, Vlad the Impaler and the fact that he was a true historic character considered a hero in um, his homeland and uh, also helped reimagine Dracula. Now, a couple of things that um, he noted that a lot of the movie industry got wrong is that he said that according to his research and 
common knowledge of the day when Stoker published his novel that the stereotypical figure of a man in a cape and a, and a tuxedo was completely wrong. That even in Stoker's book, it's noted that Dracula was dressed all in black. Where in the movies, Bela Lugosi and others have depicted Dracula more as what they figured a count would look like or a member of royalty would look out, which is where the tuxedo, the jewel, the cape, and other things like that, the neat appearance, the, um, the cultured speech and manners come from, but that, that was all theatrics, basically. And a little bit of trivia, he said a lot of that came from the fact that when Dracula used to be, or vampires were depicted in, in stage plays, that um, one theatrical group in particular, the stage manager decided that it would be cheaper to pay for a tuxedo um, because it made the character very suave and romanticized and also the actor could wear it for the cocktail party afterwards. So that saved them money in, in costumes and such. And also the cape was added because that added to some added some mystery as well as some elegance and it helped with the special effects when the character would seem to disappear on stage when he dropped through the trap door. It helped to hide the gadgets and gizmos and everything like that. So that's where that came from because um, typically someone who would, who would have lived back in the day in the 1400s when Vlad Tepish was alive would not have dressed that way. There, there would not have been tuxedos, number one. Plus, um, Vlad Tepish was not considered a very... Um, well-mannered cultured type he he was distinguished and he but he had long hair and a mustache a very thick mustache a prominent nose um and the style of his day was a lot more rustic and more um practical than what we see in the movie vampires today and Especially, you know, especially modern vampire movies. But I just thought that was a little fun fact that a lot of people might be interested in. Um, so I thought I would include that. How what we think of is the traditional vampire is actually not what the quote unquote original vampire would have been thought of. Um, as how he looked, acted, dressed, etc., etc. So, I just thought that might be some a uh, little bit of interesting information. Oh, by the way, um, I did look into um, some other information about some other things. Um, like I said, originally I wanted to do it on, on the his, the uh, historical Dracula. And I did want to include this, that there are indeed some bases for the folklore that is connected to Dracula and to vampires in general. And some of the uh, those traditions and all that. Including the, the fact that there were... Back in the day, in the turn of the century and everything, um, like I said, when, when Stoker's book came out, you know, like I said, he depicted um, Dracula, or Dracula has been depicted since, since movies and things have come out, you know, as a refined count. And because of the inference of royalty and everything, one of the connections to vampirism was a... Uh, several there were several diseases of the time one of them being hemophilia 
which causes um, blood issues, blood clotting issues. Another is pephoria. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, which can cause the receding of the gum, receding and swelling of the gums. It can cause paleness, sensitivity to sunlight, and some people it can cause extreme anemia to the point of craving blood or rare meat and things like that. And oftentimes this was caused by inbreeding. And royalty back in the day was well known for inbreeding in order to preserve the royal lineage. So that's where some of that comes from as well. Some, uh, not just the folklore of having to do with, uh, you know, the walking dead or the undead and such as that. The, um, the thing about crucifixes, holy water, and that kind of stuff more likely was incorporated due to the church and the fact that an undead person likely has no soul therefore they would be affected by religious um, articles the thing with not being able to see uh, a reflection is also supposed to be uh, indicative of having no soul as well and some legends vampires are said to be able to control animals others they don't be able to assume the form of animals and you know depending on what story you read what your source material is and everything the the quote unquote rules for vampire can vampires can vary from one to the other it you know your vampire can can be uh someone that looks like nosferatu or it might look like wesley snipes with fangs it might be uh you know sexy and suave he might be creepy and disgusting like i said it all just depends on the book or the movie of your choice um unfortunately mr mcnally passed away in 2002 at the age of 71 uh from complications from treatment of cancer um I did not include the name of his wife and children because they are still alive and I want to preserve their I mean people who look hard enough can find the information the one thing I did not find was the date of his marriage but I didn't push the issue even though I know how to contact his his widow because I just felt it wasn't so important that I needed to you know, disturb her in relation to this you know she might be tickled to, to you know be asked about it but then again she might not she would be in her late 80s by now I'm thinking so I didn't see the point in that but again I hope that um you found this informative i hope that you found it interesting if you would like me to delve more into vampire folklore and uh some more about the particular books that oh i did want to mention also not only did mr mcnally like i said were documentaries made on him i don't know if i mentioned this that he was featured in the horror hall i mean he has been noted in the horror hall of fame where he got to meet Vincent Price. Um, he was on Ancient Mysteries, History's Mysteries. He has contributed to, like I said, um, he's consulted on several movies. He, there's have been, there are several interviews and um, videos on YouTube that I can include below if, if you would like to see those. I may include a couple of the shorter ones and anything else that uh, you might be interested in. If you'll ask, I'll, I'll provide it for you. But I just found him to, like I said, when I met him, I thought he was an interesting, nice old man. Um, but since then, I've, I've found him a little more interesting, knowing what I know about him now. So I'll go ahead and close this out since this is coming up to almost 25 minutes. 
but yeah if you if you like information like this the the lesser known information about um legends and certain personalities and everything let me know and i'll, I'll try to provide that for you um because it's getting close to halloween like i said i can i can do more on vampirism and uh classical vampires i can go for um you know the folklore and medical conditions that are related to uh, what's co considered to be a werewolf i can um, approach a, c a couple of other things and i did want to remind y'all that are newer to uh, my channel that if you look back about this time last year i do I, I may have already shared it but i do have a video on the origins of halloween and a lot of the, the customs and traditions and where those came from okay well i think i've uh i've gotten to that point now and so i will leave it here but again feel free to ask questions feel free to give me constructive criticism i can always uh improve upon my style my research my presentation etc etc all comments are welcome unless you're becky and you know who you are but um like i said you know leave me a comment if you'd like and remember to be kind to one another take care of yourself and always say taze in your sleep Good night.